welcome everyone so our today's topic is atom and in the atom uh, we are going to see study about size mass and valency okay but today we will study only size and mass of an atom and valency we will cover in the next video all right so this is class 9 video from lesson measurement of matter so let's study the video all right so before st studying the atom size and mass just recall some thing okay so first question is from which experiments was it discovered that atoms have an internal structure well all right so student here this is a scientist rutherford and from his experiment it is rutherford's gold foil experiment showed that the atom is mostly empty space with a tiny dense positively charged nucleus and based on these results rutherford proposed the nuclear model of the atom all right so our second question is what are the two parts of an atom and what are they made up of so this is a basic structure of an atom in which you can observe the blue colored nucleus in the center and the extra nuclear part now extra nuclear part that is a shell so which uh, you can observe the two uh, black colored circular part so that is the extra nuclear part of an atom in which the red color electrons are revolving around okay uh, so uh, you, uh, we have already studied in our standard A that structure of an atom. So, you can uh, refer that video from my description box. Alright. So, we have learned that at the center of an atom is the nucleus and that there are moving electrons. Moving electrons which are negatively charged. Alright. These electrons are negatively charged particle and the nucleus is positively charged particle. And there are two different um, uh, elementary particles are there that is protons and neutrons so out of which a blue colored proton these are positively charged and the yellow color or green color neutrons these are negatively charged again we can see or uh, we can say that these are the neutral part neutral particles they have no charge neither positive nor negative all right so this is a basic structure of an atom all right now we, uh, we will see what is the size of an atom okay so the size of an atom is determined by its radius all right so this is a structure of a carbon atom we, you can observe in the center there is a nucleus and a positively charged nucleus and the two shells are there first that is k shell and l shell so in the k shell we have two electrons and in the last shell of carbon atom there are four electrons it means there are total six electrons in the carbon atom all right uh, so this is a radius that um, uh, the atomic radius of an isolated atom is the distance between the nucleus of an atom and its outermost shell that means the distance between the nucleus of an carbon atom and to, towards the last shell outermost shell this is called as a radius of an atom okay and this is a radius of an atom and these are the shells last shell of an atom so this is a atomic radius all right so student the atomic radius is expressed in unit nanometer so this is a unit of radius atomic radius that is nanometer all right so here it is given that one up, one upon 10 raised to 9 meter or uh, this is same as 10 raised to minus 9 meter okay 1 upon 9 10 raised to 9 meter or 10 raised to minus 9 meter is the same so 10 raised to 9 meter is equals to 1 nanometer so this is basically conversion of meter to nanometer so student you should remember this conversion okay uh, and uh, where uh, similarly 1 meter is equals to 10 raised to 9 nanometer okay so this is a conversion from meter to nanometer and meter sorry meter to nanometer okay now here one table is given in our textbook page number 48 in which two columns are there in first column it is atomic radius in meter is given and examples are given okay so first is a hydrogen molecule that is h2 okay so the radius of the hydrogen molecule is 10 raised to minus 10 all right meters okay and next is a water molecule so the radius of a water molecule water molecule formula is h2o okay so the radius of water molecule is 10 raised to minus 9 and similarly the radius of hemoglobin molecule radius means from the nucleus of an atom towards its last shell 
okay so the radius of this is 10 raised to minus 8 meter so i hope you all have understood the size of an atom now let, now let us move towards the next slide okay size of an atom so student uh, atoms are very tiny we, they are very tiny as we know that these are the smallest and indivisible indivisible part of an element okay so atoms are very tiny and modern instrument like electron microscope field ion microscope and scanning uh, tunnel microscope so this is um, on the slide i am showing you field ion microscope and with the help of this microscope the atom can be identified okay so this is an example of a iridium atom the atomic number is 77 okay so this atom has been identified or has been enlarged through this field iron microscope and the enlarged image of this iridium atom under the field iron microscope is showing on the screen okay that means field iron microscope image of an iridium atom so you, uh, here you can observe the all the spots okay every spot in this image is an atom of an iridium all right now next is the atomic size increases with the increase in the number of electronic shell okay that means uh, if the radius uh, it will increase that means if the electronic shells will increase so the atomic size will increase why increase because its radius is going to be increases okay so atomic size is directly proportional to the electronic shells or a radius so the atomic size depends on the number of electronic orbit in the atom in uh, which in the atom more the electronic orbits are there the atomic size is greater right so here the greater the number of shells the larger is the size of an atom okay so here um, example is there for example an atom of k potassium is bigger than the atom of sodium so here you can observe the two atomic size that is potassium in uh, the atomic number is 19 and sodium the atomic number is 11 so you can observe the last shell of the potassium on a, in only one electron are there but the in potassium the number of orbits or shells are 1 2 3 and 4 okay so its distance between the nucleus and the last shell is greater because the number of shells are greater all right and if you will observe the sodium atom what happened to sodium atom only three electronic shells or orbit are there so the radius is smaller so as the radius is smaller the atomic size of sodium is smaller than the potassium all right so four shells in potassium and three shells in sodium that is why it is decreases okay now next is uh, in previous slide we have seen as the more the electronic atom greater is the size but uh, greater is the size of an atom but if in case if two atoms have the same outermost shell that means if the uh, atom uh, the two shells are same that is in three and three so what happens so if two atom have the same outermost shell or orbit the then the atom ha having the larger number of electrons in the outermost shell is smaller than the one having fewer electrons in the same outermost orbit for example here two uh, atoms are given first is magnesium atom and next is the sodium atom so you can observe the magnesium uh, atom the atomic number is 12 and sodium it is 11 uh, that means the three electronic orbits are there in magnesium and sodium but what happened it is given that if the atom have the same number of outermost electronic orbit then if the atom which is having the less number of electrons in the last shell is greater then the atom having the in magnesium it is two electron so magnesium is smaller than the sodium why because in the sodium less number of electron are there in in the magnesium more number of electrons are there so as the electrons are less the charge what is nuclear charge will be greater and as the positive charge increases what happened the atomic size in a fewer number of electron will be greater than the more number of electron in an atom so here the magnesium is smaller than the sodium okay magnesium is smaller than the sodium all right now next uh, topic we have studied is the mass of an atom so here on the screen you can observe the structure of an oxygen atom so the in oxygen atom there are total eight electron two electron in the first shell or orbit and uh, total six number of electron in the last shell all right 
so this is the nucleus of an oxygen in which there are total eight protons and eight neutrons okay so the mass number we can uh, study we have studied in our previous standard it is mass uh, number of an atom is the total eight number of proton plus number of neutron so here the total number of proton and neutron so the mass of an atom is concentrated in its nucleus and it is due to the proton and neutron present in the nucleus and the total number of proton and neutron in the atomic nucleus is called the atomic mass number so what is the atomic mass number it is the sum of protons and neutrons so in the oxygen atom eight protons and eight neutrons so eight plus eight there is total 16 so mass number of oxygen is 16 okay so protons and neutrons are together called as a nucleons okay uh, instead of saying uh, proton and neutron uh, differently we can together say that it is nucleon okay so atom is a very tiny that is uh, it is a indivisible and smallest part of an element all right then how do we determine its mass so uh, it was so scientists to face this question and it was not possible for scientists of this 19th century to measure atomic mass accurately and therefore the concept of relative mass of an atom now let's study the relative mass of an atom all right so student um, for that purpose that means to determine the relative mass of an atom a reference atom was required for expressing the relative mass of an atom and for the relative uh, reference um, part atom uh, it is hydrogen atom as considered was considered was a uh, reference atom okay to determine the relative mass of an atom so the hydrogen atom being the lightest was initially chosen as a reference atom why it is lightest because only one electron is there in the hydrogen atom okay so the relative mass of a hydrogen atom was Uh, hydrogen the relative mass of a hydrogen atom which has only one proton in its nucleus was accepted as one and therefore the magnitude of the relative atomic masses of various atoms became equal to their atomic mass number atomic mass number that is sum of proton plus neutron okay all right now here student let us see how the exp um, how to express the relative mass of a nitrogen atom having accepted the relative atomic mass of a hydrogen as one that means uh, in earlier century what happened the hydrogen atom was considered as a reference atom or a standard atom but after later on what happened it is a nitrogen atom was considered as a reference atom to determine the relative mass of an atom all right so the mass of a nitrogen atom is 14 why why 14 because in nitrogen atom total seven proton and seven neutron so that why 7 plus 7 it is 14 okay so the mass of a uh, one nitrogen atom is 14 times that of a hydrogen atom and therefore the relative mass of a nitrogen atom is 14 and this is how the relative atomic masses of various elements were determine all right and on on this scale the relative atomic masses of many elements came to out to be fractional that means uh, when nitrogen atom considered as a reference atom then what happened the relative atomic masses of many elements came out to be that is they are in fractional so therefore in course of time some other atoms were chosen as a reference atom and finally in 1961 the carbon atom was selected as a reference atom so to determine the relative mass of an atom first the uh, hydrogen atom was considered as a reference atom first then after the hydrogen uh, nitrogen atom was considered as a reference um, reference atom but uh, while considering the nitrogen atom it was the num mass of a uh, relative atomic masses came out to be in fractional that means in decimal so that that's why the next atom that is carbon atom was chosen to be chosen as the reference atom all right okay so here this is a structure of an carbon atom the relative atomic mass of one hydrogen atom compared to the carbon atom becomes uh, become Uh, 12 multiplied by 1 upon 12. That is 1. That means uh, if 12 upon 12, so 12 and 12 gets cancelled and it is only 1. So the mass of one proton uh, and of one neutron on the scale was of relative atomic masses approximately equal to 1. Okay. So what is the relative mass? Let's see the definition of this. 
so the relative atomic mass of an element is the average mass of its atom compared to 1/12 the mass of a carbon atom so this is a formula for relative atomic mass of an atom so the relative atomic mass of an atom will be equal to the average mass of one atom for the for average mass means the total mass of an element that is so uh, it is nitrogen uh, carbon uh, sorry not carbon nitrogen hydrogen whatever it is there okay upon 1/12 that means the mass of a carbon atom is 12 okay so 1/12 of the 12 so this is a relative atomic mass of an element and 1/12 uh, into mass of one carbon at 12 atom is nothing but one only okay okay now let's see what is the unified atomic mass or delta so what is it so today we have highly accurate methods for measuring the mass of uh, mass of an atom directly and hence instead of relative mass unified mass has now been accepted as the unit of atomic mass and it is called as a delta now instead of calculating the relative atomic mass the unified atomic mass method has been accepted and this is also called as a delta okay and the uh, it is symbol is u and 1u is equals to 1.6605390 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg or kg okay so this is a unit uh, this is a number for 1 new okay now here how to calculate the unified atomic mass by this method so unified atomic mass of an oxygen okay here i am giving just to example to understand thing very clearly so unified atomic mass of oxygen is equals to mass of oxygen multiplied by 1 u that is 1.6605390 into 10 raised to minus 27 that means mass of a atom which we have to calculate that multiply by 1.66 this number okay so this is how unified atomic mass or dalton can be calculated so student i hope you all have understood this part of a video and next topic from this lesson we can continue in our next session thank you all of you